I'm Wayne Fithy, an agronomy manager at Rob Seco. Let's talk a little bit about ear feeding insects of corn or those, uh, those nasty worms that we see when we go out in the middle, middle of August and start to husk back those ears and, and see what kind of a crop we have and what we find is, a, is an insect that's eaten on that. There are really three different insects that you can find associated with the, the ears of corn. All three are a moth initially, or they're in the Lepidoptera family of moths and butterflies, but it's the larva, it's the worm stage that does the damage to corn. The three insects are the corn earworm, the western bean cutworm, and the European corn borer. Let's talk first about the corn earworm. Uh, corn earworm are cannibalistic. The moths like to lay eggs right in the silks of corn, so right at the tip of the ear, so that when that larva hatches, it can go right down into the ear. Uh, and what that means is, is that the, the larvae really aren't very available for a, a good treatment method. So the best way to control corn earworm is, is literally is preventing the, the insect from becoming a problem and, and you do that with traits. So again, the, the moths lay the egg singly in the ear tip. If more than one moth happens to lay an egg, they are cannibalistic. So the, the first one to hatch will generally eat, uh, eat the cousins and brothers and sisters and anybody else. And that's a good thing, right? Because then we only end up with one per ear. But the thing to remember about corn earworm, if they're feeding in the tips, it really only takes it at a normal plant population, three or four kernels per ear to equal a bushel. And a corn earworm can eat easily 10, 12 kernels. And so if you've got them in very many uh, of your ears, you're, you're talking about a fair amount of yield effect. So uh, Viptera is, is the only trait available in the market, AgriSure Viptera, that completely controls corn earworm. Uh, the AgriSure corn borer trait gives you about 50% control, so it does a nice job of reducing corn earworm populations, but AgriSure Viptera is the one that would give you complete control. Uh, the western bean cutworm, uh, another larva that we can find feeding in the ear of corns, is, uh, is an insect that the, the moth likes to lay its eggs on the upper side of the leaves and the upper part of the canopy. So the, when you first go out to look for western bean cutworm, rather than thinking about the ear tip with the corn borer, now you're going to be looking at those upper leaves. The eggs are initially creamy. Uh, they're, they're, uh, they, they'll turn a, oftentimes a bluish purple just before they hatch, and that takes four or five days to get from eggs laid to hatch, maybe seven if the conditions are really cool. And then the larva will migrate, so you want to be out there looking when the corn's chest high. Uh, if, if the corn's chest high, they're going to go up and they're going to feed in that tassel that's wrapped up in that whorl until uh, the tassel is exposed, and then they'll move down to the ear. If the field happens to already be tasseled when they hatch, they move right to the ear. So the only time you can really get them is during that migration from the tassel to the ear or from egg hatch to the ear or with traits. And uh, like the corn earworm, Agrisure viptera is very effective on western bean cutworm. In fact, it's the only trait available in the market that uh, provides complete control of western bean cutworm. So unlike the corn earworm, the western bean cutworm is not cannibalistic. So it's not uncommon to find two, three, four larvae in the same ear. And, uh, and so they can really cause a lot of havoc uh, when you get a successful hatch and they get to the ear before you get something there to control them or if you don't have a trait to protect you. Now the, sometimes corn earworm and western bean cutworm get confused. I think the easiest way to tell them apart is to look for a very dark brown collar. The western bean cutworm has a dark brown collar right behind its head and in the middle of that collar there are three little white lines that run the same direction as the body. So look for that dark collar, those three lines. If you have that, you got western bean cutworm. If you don't, you probably got corn earworm. The last of the ear feeding insects I wanted to talk about is the European corn borer. You know, we've, we've effectively managed European corn borer for quite a few years, but you know, if you're not using a corn borer trait uh, and, and you, you might still see some European corn borer in the ear, the, the, the biggest problem with European corn borer is they like to feed down through that shank. So they can damage kernels like the corn earworm and the western bean cutworm, but uh, they like to feed down that shank. And if they do that, that weakens the shank, uh, weakens the shank and uh, can result in ear droppage prior to harvest. So. Again, these ear feeding insects of corn, virtually impossible to control once they get into the ear because the husk protects them from anything you're gonna do. So the best way to control them is to use our, uh, our biotechnology traits and prevent them from being a problem. This is Wayne Fithian. We have a nice tip sheet uh, at our website on ear feeding insects of corn. 
Uh, we'll talk to you next time.